Hi guys, thanks for coming back to my channel. Today I'm so excited to share with you my entire handbag collection and just behind me and surrounded by, um, surrounded around me are the handbags that I have collected over a number of years. Um, this is not me bragging, um, this is just about my love of handbags. So if you don't like watching handbags, just feel free to go ahead and skip along to the next channel where you actually do want to watch something that you enjoy watching. And so some of these handbags are, I guess you guys would consider vintage. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. It's going to be somewhat of a um, chatty video. So put something comfortable on, grab a cup of coffee, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. So the very first luxury handbag I ever purchased was this. The um, Louis Vuitton monogram, um, I want to, I'm not sure the name of it here, but maybe it's the Pouchette. I bought this in France and I now carry this as a wristlet or a clutch. Um, currently I use it to stash sort of my um, travel essentials when I am out of town. So I keep some cords, I keep a USB charger, um, pens. So yes, this was bought in Paris, France. Um, this does unclasp and you can make it into a kind of cute little carrying um, pouch. And I want to say that I bought this at um, 25. This was actually one of my favorite purchases. This is the YSL, I believe it's called the downtown bag. Now, <laughs> and these do unzip to open up and it's this beautiful suede fabric on the inside as well as if I take out some of the stuff in here, inside the bag it's this giant um, cavernous um, <laughs> inside. And so I did buy this in Beverly Hills at the YSL store at the time. It was on sale. Um, I just thought it was such a beautiful bag and for many years I enjoyed using this. It's this crinkly patent leather that I take when I travel just because it's so huge inside. I can fit water, magazines, a blanket, um, a change of clothes, all the stuff I need to. And um, it's just made so well that I haven't wanted to part with it. This is the Marc Jacobs Venezia bag. And I still, I have a hard time parting with this bag because it is, um, you know, I remember when I saw this, I wanted the bag so much and he had the Sophia bag and um, I just remember this was probably the first I consider luxury luxury because it wasn't Louis Vuitton. It wasn't splashed with all kinds of monograms or um, designs or prints. This is just very simple and classic. Um, Louis Vuitton didn't make this design um, in their monogram canvas. So you may see something out there similar to this. And from time to time, I will carry this, although I don't carry it very often. A few years ago, um, this color came back in season. And so I wore it for a few times, but um, I haven't wanted to sell it or part it because first off, I don't think anybody would buy it. And then secondly, it's just, it's kind of like a, a little uh, memento of my um, 20s. My Gucci phase started, um, almost we probably about like in my early 30s. And it was back when Gucci was probably on its way, kind of popularity di was dying down. Um, I ended up buying this bag. I call this my revenge bag. I was going through a divorce at the time and um, it was really, really hard. And I just knew that I kind of wanted to splurge and treat myself to something. So I bought this very cool, and I still love this bag, monogram Gucci print in white leather with these braids. And it's starting to get some wear now because you can see here it has a little bit of fraying on the um, the, the braided part of the handles. But um, it's I use this also when I travel only because it it's very slouchy. I can shove it underneath a um, a airplane seat. I can carry a lot of things in it, and um, I can empty it out and still have it look cute and chic. Um, I don't know the name of it. And it's probably circa 
maybe 10 years ago, <laughs> Nine, that would be, what, 2007? So if any of you know the name of this bag, please let me know, but um, I probably will never part with it because I do love it so much. I'm going in random order, so um, I'll just kind of pull bags. They're all surrounded around me right now, so I'll just pull bags as they come up in my line of sight. Another Marc Jacobs collection is this um, bowling bowler bag. Um, I don't know the exact name of it. This was, I sort of regret purchasing it now because the handles slip off my shoulders pretty easily and you can see it's sort of like bulky. Um, I thought it was beautiful at the time so I bought it and it, it was beautiful and on sale so those are like my magic words. It's like Marc Jacobs sell and this may have been maybe eight years ago when he was still pretty popular. Um, now I haven't worn this in a very long time and for me to try to sell it I doubt again anybody would want to buy this bag. Um, it's not a very popular one or style. I carry it every now and then except it's just the handles. Um, this just tends to fall. You know, I'll wear it and if I do this, it falls off my shoulders. So uh, it's not a very good purchase, but nevertheless, I still have it. I don't know what to do with it. Should I sell it? Should I hold a giveaway and give it to a um, subscriber? I would love your feedback. This is not something that I enjoy using because I think my shoulders are so small that it's never really been um, used and loved the way it should be. Here's an oldie but goodie. So this is a Chloe. I don't know the name of it. <laughs> As you can see, it's kind of been sitting in my closet for a while and I try to stuff it properly, but um, it's still kind of a, it's a slouchy bag. I loved this bag when I saw it at Nordstrom's. And again, the magic words are designer Chloe handbag on sale. I still think it's a very beautiful bag. Um, every time I wear it, my husband, he just says so many wonderful things about it. And he says, that's a beautiful bag. And this is one of these pieces where as it gets beaten up over time, it um, has this interesting patina that just looks better when it's um, kind of weathered. And I still see it occasionally on women from time to time because um, it's a very interesting, unique piece that I think as it gets older, it gets better looking. What I don't like about this bag is that I have little hands, I'm five foot one, and so for me to carry this, it is just a, um, a bitch to carry. And it doesn't open up all the way, and so for me to try to get to um, put even a laptop or a um, you know something larger inside, it, it's kind of challenging to wear. Sorry, I'm making all this no noise here, but it does come with this great strap that I don't think it's been used that often. So the strap will um, will take some of the weight off of the the hands. So. Um, that's the only kind of uh, critique on this bag. The phase that you guys just saw was the phase where I had um, a great paying job and I, you know, could have buy a bag here and there. Um, and so coming up next now, I call it not my broke phase, but I started my business about six years ago. And so during the, my broke years, um, it wasn't that I was broke. It's just that if I had an extra thousand dollars to spend or two, three thousand, I would invest it back in my company. So I used to say, wow, a thousand dollars for a bag or a thousand dollars in marketing materials and marketing and um, advertising or towards a business. So the business always won and it still will always win when it comes to making decisions um, for handbags or for clothing versus um, marketing or advertising. So during my, my AKA broke years, I went and back to coach and I bought this bag. And the reason why I got it was that whenever I travel, I don't like to take my most expensive bag for obvious reasons. And usually when I've traveled in the past, it's not to glamorous cities. Like I see so many of these um, YouTubers going to Paris and Dubai and London. I kind of like the to rough it for a few days and then have a nice hotel at the end of the night 
or I would pick a place that is maybe like developing country. So I've been to, I'm, I'm Vietnamese, but I've been to South Vietnam, North Vietnam, um, Cambodia, um, Thailand, and so um, some of the places that I've gone in Indonesia, you know, you don't drag around an expensive handbag when you're trekking through a rainforest. So, but this bag here is just a, a simple coach. You know, this is, it has an interesting braid on top. It makes me think of Bottega. Um, inside, it has, um, you know, it's pink. And this unlatches to carry, you know, any essentials that you need to get to right away. A cell phone, or you know, keys, wallet. I will, I still think the shape of this bag is really pretty and it's well made. I know that Coach isn't, you know, the most popular brand now and I know, it seems that they are somewhat struggling to find their identity and uh, maybe with a new designer on board and his creative direction that, um, you know, they can make some grounds because it's such a well-made bag. I'm, I've never been disappointed by any of my Coach bags actually. Um, and I've kept this one just because it's, you know, it's comfortable. If I go somewhere where I know that um, I would have to be very concerned about any valuables or items, I'll just carry a cheap coach bag, throw it over my um, shoulder, and if I were to ever be robbed, uh, um, losing this wouldn't be a heartbreaking event. And this is not screaming luxury. Next up on my um, handbag purchases, this is the years. So fast forward about six or seven years and now I have been in a place where I can afford a handbag every now and then. So some of these are either purchased by myself or uh, by him. Let's see what's up here. What's next? Um, so this is the YSL Sac Du Jour and I love this bag. Um, when I got to my late 30s, I started to lean towards more classic pieces because I wanted to make sure that I had the bag for a long time versus some of the pieces that I picked up here which are just trendy at the moment. And so this sac du jour, I believe it's in the small size. And you can see I can do a bag review on this later. And what I've done is that I have purchased these Hermes Twillies and if you guys have seen some of these on eBay they are more than what they cost in the store which I don't know why anybody would do that um, or actually if you are I when I was about to buy some on eBay I said wait a minute let me ask Hermes how much does it cost uh, for the Twillies and it was a sh my surprise that they were very affordable they're actually less expensive than the ones on eBay I want to say that these are about 140 or 160. I'm not 100% sure, but um, it's not bad for what Hermes is, and it's a great gifting item, by the way, gals. So um, this is the Sac du Jour. I found a classic, but um, goodie. <laughs> so also one of the very first handbags I purchased um, in my 20s was this Louis Vuitton Cabas Piano monogram bag. Um, as you can see here, it's very stained and well loved. Um, it's, I'm not sure what these stains are from, so it's just kind of, I think, part of the, the bag's charm now. And back when cell phones were small enough to fit in a little pocket like this, you could, um, <laughs> you could put a, a phone in there. So this is a Cabas piano. I want to say I paid about 500 some dollars for it at that time, or maybe $600. But here's what an oldie but goodie. It's a Cabas piano bag. Another oldie but goodie is the Speedy 30. <laughs> I, I think this was my um, first, I bought this at 30 actually, so I bought Sorry, let me correct myself. I wasn't buying nice handbags in my 20s, or maybe I bought it at 27. I'm not quite sure. Um, but I remember, oh, actually I do remember now. My, um, this was a gift to myself on my, I wanna say my 30th birthday. So it hasn't gone out of style. What has happened here is that there has been some cracking of the canvas on the pocket. 
but for 10 years this bag has held up pretty well and um, it's again the speedy 30 kind of cool right <laughs> it's it's kept its shape and its style and patina on the handles have been um, not too dirty because I don't use this bag that often I'm more of a shoulder strap girl but um, this is a, the Louis Vuitton 30 and I think I might end up gifting it to a niece of mine um, because she's turning 13 and or 14 and you know when you're 13 or 14 how much um, fashion is important to you the battery died and so I think this is where I left off so next up a vintage Gucci I got this thing for steel remember guys I love um, sales on designer handbags and this one was actually a vintage piece I found at my shoe guy in Santa Monica and so when clients don't pay him or they never call him back after he's repaired a piece and he gives him I think two or three months to pick up something he ends up selling it so I got this beauty for $100 uh, this um, uh, gold hardware it is very actually um, substantial it's a little scratched up which is okay because I think that's part of the character of the piece and there's some little wear and tear on the back here you probably can see it here but again I think because it's so well loved um, if you can see the inside here it's suede and this is a fabric so this is just a vintage Gucci piece that I thought it would be kind of cool to have because I love the 70s fashion period and this just makes me think of 70s fashion a more a more recent acquisition if you've seen my last few videos is this pochette Matisse in the infrarouge and um, this was gifted to me by my husband so um, you know if you guys want to know more I can actually give you um, a review once I've used this bag for at least you know one or two months I can tell you how it holds up and of course up next the pochette Matisse in monogram I didn't have to wait long for this my essay in Santa Monica said we have this bag available the client who's supposed to pick it up hasn't picked it up yet do you want it I said yes so that was easy some of some of the um, the I know a lot of um, customers out there have put their names on lists or try to track it down or hunt it down they can't find it but this one was actually really easy for me to get my hands on one of my favorite 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 pieces Proenza Schooler bag so I have been wanting this bag as much as I have wanted my Balenciaga um, city bag or motorcycle bag it's just again during my broke years I saw these and I wanted them and I couldn't afford them and um, when I could this was actually one of the first bags I purchased when I was re released from my handbag ban or the band island um, and I like this bag in like either a brown a suede or a black color and I got this one on sale I found it on the Proenza site directly from the um, the designer this is I want to say it's like a scarlet kind of a darker red with um, blue undertones and so I haven't got a chance to use this very often because of the rains lately but I do love this Proenza schooler bag and I believe that you can go onto their site now and maybe find some some bags on sale I got this beauty this Valentino rock stud clutch and it has I I'll hold it like this I didn't get a chance to use it a lot last season because um I didn't wear the right colors that would go with this but this is a beautiful blue color which I am obsessed with and I may have overstuffed it because there's some kind of um, this here Wow, well, I had the Ritz Carlton don't need that I got this bag for one thousand two hundred seventy one dollars so um, I have no regrets in buying this and it's starting to do what the Chloe bag has done where the bottom 
part of this is starting to lift up because I have it sitting or standing like this. So I don't know how to prevent that. Maybe just to hang it in this fashion somewhere off of um, a hook. That might be the solution. Okay, so you may have noticed the slight change in the background and it's now afternoon. I had to take a quick break to join my girlfriends for brunch and so um, I took a pause in, <laughs> in filming this video and now I'm back. The next piece coming up is my Louis Vuitton twist. This was a recent um, gift from my husband and so far I have not been able to use this um, bag yet because I acquired quite a bit of bags in the last few months and I have been a little bit um, I guess ADD of my handbags and I don't know if you guys have the same problem but and let's see next up I have a Chanel executive surf tote. This I bought off of a um, pre-love site and I want to say it's either Tradesy or Vestiaire Collective. Um, I, I think that's where I got it from. Um, I found it to be an authentic piece after asking her for a ton of photos. We went back and forth on the price of the bag and I think I ended up purchasing it for about $1,400 and it's actually in great condition. It's a little bit slouchier here where the leather ha um, handles are pulling on the leather but that's expected to come with age of the bag. One of my favorite weekend pieces that I is this Balenciaga mini uh, motorcycle bag. I think it's a motorcycle or a city bag. Um, I had wanted this bag but in the adult size and not the little mini me size. So it's, I'm gonna go ahead and latch it for you here, the handle, but this is a crossbody bag and it works really well for me. It actually fits a lot and I'll do a review on this bag one day, but if you can see it here, I'm about 5'1", so it sits at the perfect spot for me at this place of my, um, you know, my hip. So this is adjustable, so you can make it longer or shorter, but um, I think this height or angle or length works for me. So the, the Balenciaga city bag and um, the leather's wearing out beautifully and the handle here is braided. So um, it's not very big inside. You can see, take out the stuffing. I use my shoe bags uh, sometimes for um, stuffing inside. Lauren. Ricky bag and it's already starting to slouch as you can see here. And right now I have it stuffed so it doesn't it doesn't look as attractive as it normally should. You know, obviously it reminds everybody of the Birkin bag in design and look, but um, some of the different, obviously these details here are completely different. And I'll buckle it for you guys. And this bag is another one which I'm not so precious with or um, take great care of. And I don't know why, I think it's just because it seems like be because of the color, like these are one of those bags that as it starts to age, it only gets better the more you use it. I haven't used it very much in the last year or so because, as you have already seen, I, <laughs> I've sort of collected a number of bags and to try to change out the purse every day can be a pain in the you know what. So let me un go ahead and unbuckle it. So I'll take out the stuffing, excuse the noise. So this bag can hold quite a bit. So inside is the, the Ricky bag. It has, it's like the Birkin. It just has one pocket inside here. This pocket does snap, which I had never had snap there for you. Just one giant pit of beautiful leather inside. It still smells really good after, we're going on, it's, we're going on um, a little over three years here. 
And so here's what it looks like unstuffed. And I think my mistake is that I may have overstuffed this bag because now it's getting kind of funky um, lines, but this is what it looks like when it's just resting with no stuffing on the inside. And like the Birkin, you can either carry it like this, you can tuck these, I don't know what these, the flaps in, so you can carry it like this bag, like this. You can even undo these straps even more so it carries on the inside. Um, you can carry it. There's a lot of different ways. I haven't carried it with the the flaps or the gussets out, but I guess you could if you wanted to make it look a little bit more Celine-like. So that's that's a Ricky bag. Or so there is a Celine store, and I saw this beauty. And what I love about this belt bag, just a number of things. This is great to carry in the crook of your arm. I love the gold details. This pocket back here, I don't use it very often. Sometimes I'll tuck in my phone if I need to, um, just for ease of use. But inside the pocket, it is lined with this um, great suede black fabric. And the, this bag has held up so well. So um, you can see here, I take out the stuffing, and my <laughs> the entire floor in front of me is covered in bag stuffing. Um, and I have a receipt that don't need that. Um, and you can see inside the bag, it's a black leather, um, or sorry, black suede inside. And it's a little dirty. And inside here are two little kind of um, pockets that, oh, huh, I got some Starbucks cards. <laughs> Isn't that kind of cool? This is bad. Have you guys ever found money in your purse or your pants or your jacket? And it's always a nice surprise. And then also I think this is bad. If I'm this careless with my money, um, and this still is money, um, that's not good. I, I, I shouldn't be so careless with it. So I'm going to set this aside because I'm definitely going to use it. Um, and the beautiful thing about this bag also is it does come with a strap and it's comfortable the you know this does these do have Celine stamped on them and you clip it to the back of the bag so you can either wear it on your shoulder I don't think I'm not I'm not tiny enough to wear a crossbody so it's only on your shoulder here and the few ways you can carry the belt are just open like this. You can, I don't ever carry it like this too often, but you can. And you can wear, carry it with this tucked um, outside, or you can fasten it or tucked, I don't know what the word is, fasten it on the inside. Which I don't wear it this way very often because you can see how it's a little bit um, annoying to get in and out of it when you are trying to get to your phone or your, um, you know, your wallet. So um, here's a bag and you know, you can see with it zipped what it looks like. Celine Belt, uh, 2015 I think is when I bought it. The next piece in my collection is this Louis Vuitton Keepall 45. Um, this is about, 10 years or 12 years old and if any of you have debated on whether to buy Louis Vuitton travel luggage I would say do it definitely do it I have not regretted this purchase at all so I got this um, bag and I thought it's gonna be so great and I was right it has been I did get it a hot stamp with my initials and um, and, and this does, I hardly ever, you know, I don't normally um, use this piece because I, if I am using the bag, I, it's kind of a pain to get in and out of each time. So some of the things that has, this bag has been through a lot, just so you know, it's seen me through a lot of different relationships that began and ended in either weeks or months. Um, and some of the pieces here does have some water stains on it. So 
and it's starting to show a little bit of leather cracking here as well as a lot of cracking here and I don't know if you can see it um, it's a Louis Vuitton epi black um, what would you just call this a pouch a purse I, I wish I had the name of this maybe one of you guys can tell me out there this was actually a gift to me about let's see here I'm going back in time maybe 12 13 years ago I was a rep at a wireless communications company and um, one of my accounts he was traveling to Paris with his girlfriend and he's and when he came back he surprised me with this beautiful piece isn't it so adorable and um, I use this piece a lot because um, whenever I go out for dinner or I um, just need to put my keys in and a wallet and some lip gloss I take this with me it's such a great um, piece to have the one complaint I do have with this and I don't know if Louis Vuitton still makes this pouch or not but um, and I'm just undoing it here and you can see here the strap and the handle um, this is when there um, is more of a gold tone instead of a brass. The main complaint I have with this bag is that this leather strap, it split almost like within a year's of use. I, I bought the Neverfull MM in the Damier a bean. And I'm not, oh, this thing is heavy. <laughs> I'm not going to take all this stuff out because it does contain all my work files. Um, while many have said their bag, you know, they can fill it and it's never full. This bag, <laughs> it gets, you want to see what's inside. Um, it gets full quickly because I think I tend to carry a lot of things like my, um, DA, um, in monogram, uh, uh, graffiti. And, you know, I have a little, t this accessory. I carry a ton of accessories as well as papers and files in here just because I don't know where to put these papers and I have to sort of kind of keep on top of it. So um, that's the Neverfull MM with the pouch that comes along with it. The one complaint I have about this bag is that because of the straps are not, uh, they don't soften up in time, they stay pretty stiff. It is a bear on your shoulders to carry. I don't like carrying this bag on my shoulders when it is full. It hurts. Even in my hands, on my shoulders, these straps do not, I don't know, they, they just really hurt on my shoulders and it just, it's, I thought I would love it a lot more. I'm, I'm not gonna get rid of it because I think it would be good for traveling. I can put a lot of things in it. I just have to make sure that the things I put in are light and not things like files and papers and anything that weighs too much because then it really hurts to carry and I don't wanna carry it at that point. I've done a review on this bag on the Proenza Hava top panel bag, Proenza Schooler. And this is in a um, a burgundy color, um, gifted to me by my husband last year around the fall. Uh, so when I saw, I wanted a top handle fall color bag, fall winter. I didn't tell this to him. I just started occasionally looking at different um, sites. He brought this home for me. So, um, and it's from last season, I believe. Again, I still haven't taken off the blue sticker because I want to preserve it for as long as I can uh, without scratching it. So it's quickly become a treasured piece in my collection because I don't see a lot of people with it. It's beautifully made. Uh, the hardware is just gorgeous. And little details like the tab here, in, you can see here, it's curve so it's really nice to use you can easily pull with your finger and it also lays flat against the um you know the zipper section here talk about oldie but goodie how many of you guys remember the fendi baguette <laughs> right uh made famous by sarah 
Jessica Parker, Carrie Bradshaw in Sex and the City. I have one. <laughs> now, <laughs> wow, I almost, I almost completely forgot that I had this bag until I started doing the collection. And let's see here. And you know what? The Asian in me. <laughs> I still have the little, if you, you can't see this here, but there's this little film covering the Fendi um, logo tag. It's still on there. <laughs> so, wow. <laughs> um, and because I don't use this bag that often anymore, it's not really in style. I, um, it, it hasn't been, it's been well preserved and taken care of. This is one of my very first handbag acquisitions next to my Louis Vuitton and um, the Cabas Piano and the Speedy. So um, that is that is vintage, right? My very first Chanel bag that I purchased was this boy bag. And this was my first purchase that I made when I knew that financially I could comfortably afford a big splurge. This was an unexpected purchase. I knew I wanted a Chanel flap or a boy bag. I had been watching it on, you know, on different YouTube videos. I've seen it in blogs. And so I walked into the Chanel store and I wasn't planning on buying a bag that day. I just said, you know what, let me see what they have. Can I see your boy bags? Can I see your flat bags? And the associate brought out this. And it's this, you know, um, it's not bright gold and it's not vin vintage gold. But um, she brought this bag and I couldn't decide between the two. So this bag, the Chanel Boy, was, and I don't know if it's a medium. I hear medium large. I know it's not the large, more kind of square bag. It's a smaller size. Um, I don't know what its size is called, but it says it's medium, medium large. And so it was one of those bags where I said, you know, I have to have it. It should be part of my collection, and so I bought it. My very last handbag of this collection is... Yes. <laughs> my Chanel Jumbo Flap in caviar leather with silver um, metal. I really have been loving using this bag. So that is it. For my 2017 handbag collection. Thanks guys for watching. If you have any questions on these bags or you want a more in-depth review, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, and I think I'm going to start doing what's in my bag Wednesdays as well as, you know, how I pack a work bag videos if that's something that you think would be fun to watch or useful. And um, I'm going to start working on my entrepreneur tips and how to make a business successful or what it takes to make it successful and how to get started um, because I'm actually getting ready to start a new business now and um, you guys can join along for that ride. Thanks again for watching guys. I'm T. Mankiewicz. Bye. I forgot I had one last bag I have in my collection. Let's see if I can grab it here. That's right, the Chloe Hudson.